this is Tony Osales from Made in Metal, and today we are going to talk with Brian Tichy, the drummer, now the drummer in the Dead Daisy. The Dead Daisies. How are you, Brian? Very good. How are you? Fine, thank you. We are here because the Dead Daisies recently released a new CD called Radiance, and you are again in the band. Tell me, how did you get in the band this time? Um, I, I went over to Doug Aldridge's house in the middle of the night and I started banging on his door and ringing his doorbell and screaming, please, please, Douglas, let's be back in the band. And he, he called the police and they had me arrested and I went to jail overnight. Uh, but finally they had a band meeting and they, they decided, you know, he's, this guy's going to lose his mind. So you should, uh, you should just let him back in and see how it goes. It's crazy. It was crazy, crazy week that week. But um, no, <coughs> they uh, they they gave me a call at the end of last year and said, "What do you uh, you know? What's going on next year? You want to do this? Do you want to do a, a record and tour?" And I was like, "Yeah." Glenn, Glenn Hughes is now in the band, and I've been friends with, with Glenn a long time. So I was like, "Cool, man. Play playing with Doug and Glenn and David Lowy. This is gonna sound it's gonna sound big. I know it's gonna sound good, and we're gonna get to." Uh, you know, make a record and tour together, and that's what we'll do for 2022. So I was like, cool, yeah, let's do it. So, and tell me, did you participate in the writing process? Uh, oh, no, no. They had already, they had a lot of music through the pandemic. They, they, I think they were supposed to maybe do a record sooner, but there was a lot of writing. Glenn and Lowy and Doug all throwing ideas back and forth. So by the time I came in, there's lots of demos. I just had to learn the demos. You know, I just had to, they had already known what, what you know, these are the songs we want to start working on for the record. So I was like, cool, yeah, it's whatever. You know, let's let's go in and have some fun, make up some good drums and and start start the record with the drums, you know? So no, I just came in ready to play drums. May I ask you, because you are a songwriter and apart from Billy Idol, when you are in a band, do you offer your songs or only play drums like in this case? Well, uh, for anybody out there that wants to know what to do and what not to do when you're in a new band, don't get the gig, especially, especially as the drummer. Don't get the gig and say, hey, guys, I've got a lot of great song ideas. No, 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 no. Just get in there and do your job. Get in there and play drums. And if somewhere down the road things happen, it'll happen. If it doesn't, like, uh, like imagine you get the gig as the drummer in Whitesnake, right? And then David covered up. Hey, you got the gig. You're like, yeah. And then you go, oh, by the way, David, I've got a lot of song ideas. And I sang, you know, on the demos. And I have a lot of lyrics. And I, I'm going to send them all to you. And I'd like to see what you think. Just 15 songs. No, no, no. Don't do that. <laughs> Just do what you're supposed to do. And if things grow from there, they will. If not, and you're supposed to be a drummer, just play the drums. Uh, after this advice, I'm totally aware that what you are doing. Yes, but I thought that maybe in this case, the dead days is you are a long time friend. Maybe they want some of you. But yes. Maybe they they are very maybe, maybe maybe in the future because on the make some noise record we did write together. I also was the drummer. I participated, but I kind of just was like I wanted to go with the band as a group. So maybe maybe I had a song title, or maybe I had a little part, or maybe Doug had a riff, and then he I was like to put those two together, you know. But but uh, so it's cool. It, it, it's, it's totally cool here. It, it, but for this at this point in time, those guys already had a lot of music. That was it. They, they Glenn has lyrics, melodies, Doug's guitar riffs. They've been working together. My I didn't even think twice about it. I knew just come in and play the drums. But in the future, whatever's next. If they go, hey guys, let's start getting ideas together. They will say. Everybody throw us throw each other ideas. Yes, you know, and and uh, 
you know, we'll all be trying to net, write the next Smoke on the Water meets Whole Lot of Love meets Back in Black riff. And hopefully one of us does. <laughs> yes. So I, I, I'm sure that you are a funny person, easy going, because I can't imagine that even you, who are a very recognized drummer, when you go in the band, they say, no, 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 you are the drummer. Don't say anything. Just play. Yeah, I mean, it's every situation is different. You have to just, you just, you have to know what you're getting into. You can't, you can't go in. I don't go into anything assuming I'm this or that. It's that's that's silly. You're working for somebody. You know, you know somebody's somebody's hiring you to be there to do a job. So that's that's the first thing. And for me, usually the job is to play drums. Play the drums, learn the songs, play the drums, make the band sound groovy, and really keep your mouth shut until until you get comfortable. Because you might do a good job on drums, but maybe your personality is not going to work with the band. You know, maybe everybody's got their own little quirks. So I kind of just try and, you know, play, play, do the job. Just do the job. And if people start opening up to you, Maybe that'll become bigger, bigger friendships, uh, other work, other ideas formulate and generate from relationships. So I just start with it's the easiest thing in the world. If you if you got the gig, if you put the time in to get a do a job, just do that, do that, and then things will happen out of that. Like I said, you know, I have a lot of great uh, friends through. Bands I've played in, like great friends that I'll be friends with, that I've been friends with since my 20s, that I'll be friends with in my 80s. You know what I mean? Like, this is the way it's guaranteed, you know? And so, um, but that, that, that I didn't know that going into the band. I didn't know when I played in Foreigner that I would still be on good terms with Foreigner and still keep in touch with many of the guys in the band. You know, that's great. These are people that I care about and that I want to have around me that make me happy and you know what I mean so you start with that see what happens just get the job done it's like you don't join ACDC and start putting in Neil Peart fills and you don't join Rush and only play like like Phil Rudd like you know certain things have to happen to make things work in the situation you know so you just just be smart usually the best thing is to just keep your mouth shut in the beginning just just Just, just pay attention. Big ears, small mouth. <laughs> you know, really. And tell me, Brian, is there a, a place uh, where you prefer recording drums, for example, in your own studio, or you go anywhere and play the drums in at any studio? Everywhere. I, I, I love every room is different. Every studio is different. And anything can happen anywhere. Well, if you're in a small, tiny room with lots of rugs, you're probably not going to get when the levee breaks. But I'm saying it's all good. It's all you learn from all of it. You know, I, I like I like recording myself because it's 100 hands on every detail, uh, you know, for better or worse. And I learn. But because you learn from your mistakes. Trial and error. But also when you go work in a big studio with a big producer, sometimes I'm not paying attention to the, uh, the engineering side of it because I'm more focused on, you know, the, the drumming, you know, just the drumming and I don't get into detail, but I'm always learning. So, so I, I wish I learned like what mics, what microphones, what preamps, like that's all, I love all that stuff. And I should know a lot more at this point. I should really <laughs> know a lot more. But I go with my ears first, but I, I, it's all good. It's all good. I just don't like going to a studio where the drums sound good and there's good equipment and everything's cool. And I hit the snare drum and I can hear a tone and then we finish and whatever they got on the other side doesn't sound like what I sounded like. Then that bums me out because people know how to work the gear. They know how to but some people are really focused on rules like rules the rule is you can't do this and this you can't put these things together this is a rule this is a rule and in music you know and i think recording technology it, 
I mean, how many great vocals, lead vocal tracks on rock songs or even blues or jazz or whatever, where the mic microphone's distorted, you know, like some old Aretha Franklin or Otis Redding. It's like you can hear the distortion. What? That's cool, man. It's, it's a character. As long as it's not completely blown out and broken, you know, character's character, you know. So I, I, I everywhere. I'm, I'm into it all. You learn. You learn everywhere you go. Oh, always try to learn because I'm always trying to. Zeppelin's my favorite produced records. You know, the, just something in the world of Zeppelin to me was just the mightiest. And so to, I'm always trying to get closer to that, like that completely organic, natural. And it's not perfect. It's not like it, you know what I mean. Everybody, oh, Zeppelin means huge drums. Well, okay, not every song is huge drums. They're just badass drums. You know, you know. Huge riffs. Well, not every, you know, most of the guitars aren't even huge, you know. It's just a blend, and uh, it's all the people involved, you know, that were amazing, you know, talents in their own right coming together. So, you know, you just learn. You're always trying to learn and, and figure out how do I get, you know, closer to that kind of stuff. Perfect. Does it mean that when you deliver the drum tracks, you deliver totally perfect, according to you, but maybe a producer say, no, you need to repeat or something? No, they're never perfect, but you know they, they're acceptable. If I'm doing it on my own, somebody goes, "Hey, I'm sending you a song," and I record and I send it back. Usually, it's good. Usually, it's all cool. I, I want information. You got to tell me what you want. Tell, tell, you know, tell me details, and I'll stick to it. Give me notes. I will pay attention. The, the more attention I focus on making you happy, the quicker I can execute what you want me to do. The quicker you say, cool, we're done, and I don't sit here going back and forth on something way longer than is needed. So you pay attention first. But usually, yeah, it's it's rare that I do drums for somebody and they go, oh, it's all wrong and you did this and that. Some people go, hey, do your thing. Like, I trust you. Like, put you play play how you play. But that means I could go crazy and do too much, but I just try and be smart. Like, okay, this sounds like it's kind of ACDC-ish. This sounds like it's kind of fusion-y. This sounds like it's funky. This sounds like it's more pop. This sounds, and you just try and play. Like, I don't need to show, I don't, I don't care about, when somebody hires you, I don't care about showing off. It's like, like, do you ever, well, do you ever hear John Bonham, the track, uh, he played with Paul McCartney, Beware My Love? There's a song, a wing song called Beware My Love, John Bonham on drums, and Paul didn't put it on the wings record. He used his drummer. But you listen to Bonham, show, you know, he's putting some fills in, like he's being Bonham, but for the most part, he's just grooving, you know, for the most part. And he puts in his little things. It's so John Bonham, you know, he's, you hear him, he's not trying, he, he's just, and that's why Paul wanted him. He wanted him, I'm sure, to sound like Bonham. But uh, I, I, I think, you know, He, there's there's the drummer from Led Zeppelin playing with the front man of the Beatles. You know, it's like that's heavy duty. That's a good, so there's a lot of that's a lot going on. That really is that's huge. It's it's stupid huge, you know. And I go I, whoever's sending me stuff, I just try and fit into what they're doing without worrying about I have to do the next coolest thing on drums. It's more it's about the song, you know. So so uh, but yeah, luckily I have very few experiences of somebody saying. Uh, you know, I don't like it. Uh, you studied uh, music at the Berklee College of Music, and and now taking account that you uh, play drums, guitar, you write. Uh, tell me, when you go, when you went to the school, what did you study exactly? Is is general studies of music or drums? It, it was all music. You have to take a, a semester of piano, whole like. It's like four months. So you had to practice piano, changing chords, doing octaves with two hands, like up a scale. It, stuff that I I don't practice piano, so I, I don't remember. But you had to do it. It was part of the curriculum. Uh, ear training. You had to train your ear, which is now, like it was good. It was cool. But now I wish I paid more attention because your ear is it's the, it's music. It's the, it's the big, it's the most important thing is to use your ear. Especially as a drummer, if you can understand music theory, which I already did music theory, like I already knew, I didn't know music theory like a, some mastermind, but I, I understand music theory, the basics, you know, my how chords are related and 
modes and all. I, I get it because I, uh, because of Ingve Malmsteen and Randy Rhodes in high school, I was like, I have to learn like why these, you know, when I hear Randy Rhodes talking in interviews about, you know, music theory related stuff and modes and scales, I was like, Randy Rhodes is a God. I gotta, I want to learn why, how he knows these, you know, I want to learn about this stuff. So I already knew music theory and I just got a little better at it, you know, in Berkeley, but it was all drums all day long. If you weren't playing drums, you're playing guitar, you're learning from the students as much as you're learning from teachers. Like I might have learned more from students than teachers, but that's a good thing. If you're paying attention to what everybody else is doing, everybody's in this 3000 people, you know, 3000 kids working on music, you know? So, and yeah, but it's all music. It's, it was, it's it, three years nonstop, three years in another summer. So that's a lot of time at a great time, 18 years old, to be sitting there in a music college, exposed to Miles Davis and James Brown and Steely Dan and Jeff Beck and stuff that I didn't know, you know, and all the, the Chick Corea, you know, as an 18 year old kid, it was awesome. It was awesome. You know, I had a, a, a music college can mess you up for the, for the real world. You can think I've got a, learn everything and show everybody everything all the time. But I always went back and would still practice to like rock records. Even though I was working on other other stuff, I still musically loved the rocks, my my favorite rock bands the most, like musically. That's what I still enjoyed. So I'd I'd practice to like whatever, Chick Corea and I'd practice to John Schofield and but then I'd still also practice to Zeppelin and Aerosmith and stuff that I grew up on, you know, great, great, great experience. But yeah, it's ear training, acoustics class. You had a class to study the acoustics. I didn't care about acoustics in class, but then I'd go be miking up my drums and recording demos with my friends, totally learning about acoustics and on a four track. Why wasn't I paying attention in acoustics class to this stuff they're teaching me when I'm using it all the time with my mics and my drums, you know, it just didn't, it just didn't come to not, it didn't all come together. I was like 18, 19 years old. It's not, you know, I wasn't putting it all together yet, you know, but it, it's all, it was all great. Another great, great experience. Great hang. Yeah. If you, if you can, you know, whatever, if you can afford to go to music college and they accept you and you don't have your own band, you know, nothing wrong with it. Go there for a year and check it out. You know, if you don't get better, I'd be surprised. I come home, from every semester and I'd be I would feel myself getting better every month like I could tell I could just feel it that's a good feeling when you can really honestly whoa I'm better than I was last month I know I'm better because I'm living this like that's huge though that and that, that was constantly happening I knew I was getting better just tell I'm always recording myself always practicing always listening to other drummers always learning 18 19 20 years old I can hear them getting better. I got just everything. Chops are getting better. My ears are bigger. My sense of rhythm, my understanding of, you know, just whatever rhythm and groove is getting better. You know, damn the dexterity, the independence. You know, yeah, it's cool. It's great. Perfect. And uh, did you choose the drums from the very beginning? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It, it, I, I think it's like most drummers, most musicians, or anybody that loves something. At some point in time, it clicks. And for, for, for me, before I played drums, you know, you know, you'd have these catalogs for, you'd open up a catalog from a store and they'd show you clothes and toys and tools and instruments, right? It's like a big, you know, like a store in a mall, like Sears, JCPenney. And at Christmas time, you had to like, you know, pick out some presents. So there, you know, you'd always get to the music section, mm -hmm. see the drum set. I'd see guitars, but like electric guitar, like a Les Paul. I'm like, that's cool. But I'd see a drum set and I'd be like, uh, drums always, always stood out. Anytime drums were anywhere, I'd drive by a store and you see a music store and see drums. I was like, that's it. That, that was just the coolest thing ever. That a set of drums is the best. It still is to me. It's still, it's really is. It's just like, I still like you know, looking down Instagram and <clears throat> they show vintage catalog pictures of like old drum sets. I'm like, I remember that picture. It's so, so inspirational and, and just, yeah, I just, 
Don't know why. I have no idea why. I don't care. It doesn't even. It doesn't matter. But I, so probably like every, every drummer probably looked at drums and said, "And the sound." I listen to commercials, TV theme shows, watch every the radio, driving in the car with my mom. That's a boring snare drum sound. That's a cool snare drum sound. You know, first time I heard "Hold the Line" from Toto. You know, "Hold the Line." I think I know it. Maybe I don't. Um, you know. Right. Right. And I was like, that's badass. And then at the end of it, Jeff Picaro starts going, do to do that. You do to get, do to get, do to do get to do. And I was like, I pick it. Like, I was just constantly like taking all that in. You know, if you haven't listened, if, if you haven't heard Look Sharp from Joe Jackson, I was probably already playing drums then, but like, I don't even know the drummer's name in Joe Jackson. Look sharp. Listen to the middle breakdown. It's killer stuff. So, but I was always listening. Just always like, you know, yeah, that's it. Drums, drums. Like there's a mountain of cool things. And I always said there's a mountain of cool things. And at the top is the drum set. We must mention that you offer private lessons. You are a teacher too. Please explain us about your breaking down bottom study course. I, yeah, I have the, the website, um, briantishy.com. And you could go there and like, if I'm available and you can write me a message about, you know, I'm interested in drum lessons. And so I don't like promote it. Like, it's not like I, I don't give like lessons all the time when I'm home, but the more time I have, I'll do it. You know, I've done it since high school, I've always taught. And, and I know one thing, this is, I won't, I won't pump, I won't put pump myself up on some pedestal for just about anything but i will say i'm a good teacher i know that and i and i can be sort of boastful about that because i've seen the look in students eyes and the reactions when we're done you just want to make them excited about playing and you want them to you want to be honest about what they need to do to get better and if you can show them one thing one thing that they can say that they can feel happen That's that's the path, you know, that's and because we all know what it feels like when you learn something. It, I always it's like riding a bike. It's really, it's right. That first time you actually balanced yourself on a bicycle with two wheels and pedaled and your body was even and it's never going to change. And that's the same with you playing an instrument. Once you get something and you feel it, you know, whether it's hitting a, you know, a chord on guitar, playing a beat. It's there. It's and that's that's important stuff. Once you feel the evenness of like a double stroke roll get more even, but I teach privately when I can, and uh, the breaking down Bonham stuff, it, it, it's there. There's two songs. <laughs> I put a lot of time into this. It, it simply it's the song rock and roll and the song the crunch, and I learned them like you know, I really listened to them and I made notes and I play along to the song and, you know, with a video so you can watch me play to the song and then just listen to me play without the music so you can really hear. And then I have an hour long video, but it's not just like I did it because I was looking around YouTube, like who's it's cool. A lot of people show you how to do, Oh, here's a Bonham. Here's a drum, this or that. But this is John Bonham, like the most legendary rock drummer ever. And there's so many questions about how he does things. And I don't know everything, but I was just like, I, you know, I put a lot of time into it. So I went even crazier and I tried to tune my drums to make them sound as close as I could to the original recording, which is very difficult. I didn't expect to do that. It took a lot of time, a lot of hours. But for me, I knew if I try that, I'm going to get better at the art of recording drums and tuning and miking. So I did all that and I, and I, and it took a lot of time. And then you have to edit the videos and put it all together, write notes down, charts, the video lesson. But I'm showing you, if you go and sign up for this, you will, I don't think there's anywhere else you will find where you can literally get the whole song broken down, but it's not, this is the first beat. This is the second, this is a, it's, these are the parts, but here's other things. You have to be able to do all this stuff. Before you can play this track with confidence, you need to learn these things. These are things to think about. 
like what would go through my mind, you know, like in real time, if I like had explained this to somebody sitting there, that's so anybody that signed up, everybody that has written back and said, yeah, you know, yes, you like it's so you're not going to just like listen to this and, and get it in one day. You're going to, I mean, there's some, yeah, there's some drummers out there like that would, that are exceptional drummers. But I'm saying if you've never tried to play some of this stuff, don't expect to get it one day. This is going to be a thing that's going to take a, a lot of hours to get to a point where you can play comfortably in that, that style. So it's not, you know what I mean? It's not just licks. It's not just like an exercise. It's all the tools you need. Like it's like the behind the scenes stuff. You know what I mean? It's what did you need to do to prepare? So I, but I've only have two songs because it's, took a long time and it's and then I had I started another song and then I lost the video something happened with the hard drive I can't even remember I had a fire in my studio all this junk and it's just like back to you know it sidetracked me and and then pandemic happens and you know I should have done more in the pandemic that's what I had time but I had to like figure out how to you know work for real and you know but anyways it's a start and maybe I'll do more because uh, it's fun and I, I don't think you can um, I don't think there's anywhere else like there's there's definitely people out there showing you on YouTube for free. Here's bottom stuff, but not th like this, just not like this on a drum set that is tuned very similarly to that track, you know. So, um, yeah, but you could go, you know, I'd say for the charge, it is the amount of time, the amount of hour, like the hours I put in is stupid, but the amount of hours you get out of that of practice for all the different angles of what, what I'm showing you, I think it's, you know, it's, it's more than worth it if you can't do that kind of thing yet, you know. Yes, now that you mentioned that there are some parts that are extremely difficult, I saw a video of you some days ago playing some part of Steve Gadd drums. I remember, and I remember him playing the song Spain on Aldi Rose CD this time. And uh, so you try to, you, you, you try no, you did it very well. Play with the cowbell and do this and that. And tell me, uh, because at the beginning, Peter Chris, when you were a young boy, maybe Peter Chris was your idol. But yeah. now, is there a drum, a drum player that you consider an idol, a people that you still learn from him? Yeah. Well, I mean, Steve Gadd, it's the Mozambique, the Mozambique beat, you know, which I never really exactly learned you know it's but i learned other stuff that's similar it's sambas whatever all that kind of stuff i just was you know i was like i just want i went on youtube to go what's the gad always busts into like one specific cowbell beat that always catches your ear it's always great sometimes he does it slow you know and sometimes he speeds it up so I, that's that's why i was messing around with that uh just because i wanted to learn it, you know, remember it in my head. But uh, Gad is a god. He's, he's one of my favorites. He's, he's amazing. Um, but yeah, for me, it's, it's been the same for a long time. John Bonham, Neil Peart, Alex Van Halen, the, Michael DeRozier, Steve Gad. You know, like, as far as like my favorite drummers, it's the legendary drummers. Yeah, uh, you know, Buddy Rich and Louis Belson, Max Roach, uh, Clyde Stubblefield, you know, the, it's, there's all these legendary drummers, you know, that everybody loves, you know, for different reasons. You know, I love I love Keith Moon for, for Keith Moon because nobody plays like Keith Moon. And I love, you know, Neil Peart for Neil Peart. You know, I love Gad for Gad because uh, of all the things that they are behind a set of drums, you know. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, new drummers out there that are mind blowing, you know, that are insane. So you're always learning. You know, I, I, I love a lot of new drummers. And some of them surely for just technique, like, oh, my, you know, that's just you've, you've really practiced to a level because my, my excuse is, oh, I didn't practice enough uh, drums. Like, I know I could get a lot better. Like, I definitely could get a lot, lot better. It's kind of, bu of a bummer. <laughs> it's like I should be a lot better. But I also like was like, I want to play guitar. I want to write songs and, and I should be better at those. And I want to sing and I want to I want to have a band where I make killer riffs up. And we're a band, you know, and I put a lot of, I put years into like writing my own music and singing and got a couple of little record deals and stuff. But um, there was a time I didn't, it was pro the same time in 2000, 2000, I was playing drums 
for Ozzy for the Ozfest 2000 tour. And that's like amazing. That was a serious highlight. It was so aw- But at the time, my mind was guitar, singer, band. So it was like drums were like on the side, you know, which, so I was like, this is cool. This is awesome. But I, I got my band going too. Like that was where I was mostly at. Not, not my mind was not behind the drums as much as it was on a guitar and front trying to front a band and stuff, you know? So your, uh, my last question, your passion playing with the speed back still continues? Oh yeah. 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 Totally. It's funny. You're bringing up, funny you're bringing it up because I finally just like reassembled my garage because it was getting a little bit floppy or whatever, but I just sort of created some space and storage and I have an area and I finally got the speed bag into a the good part of the wall solid and it's there like just a week ago it's like so much better now because in my old place I had it all set up I had two speed bags you could do t- like it was a whole thing then I moved and didn't really get uh, get it in a, as good a place so yeah I have that one and just yesterday just yesterday I played in this Japan band bees in 2019 and they're a really big band they're like the biggest they're the biggest rock band in Japan play arenas so when I played with them all summer I had shipped over my speed bag stuff and they would set it up underneath the this the stage the, the crew would set my speed bag at every show so I'd go under the stage and I'd be speed bagging before the sh- at every show it was awesome but but I thought I was going to go back and p- play with them the next year then the pandemic happened so my whole box of speed bag stuff was sitting there in their office for like three years so I finally was like maybe I should can you guys send it back so they just FedExed it back and it just got here yesterday so it's like I have other stuff I'm going to set up uh to, so I have back to two yeah so yeah I mean I still do it I love it I love yeah I totally it's, it's awesome I just don't practice as much but eat just from putting it up the other day last week i can already oh yeah now i have the space again and now i can focus more yeah perfect you are a really funny person i i understood the sense there is something that when i felt when you play drums it's not only the technique you need the rhythm the heart the the feeling is really good thank you very much yeah you're welcome yeah i i that's That's what it is. It's you're, you're, there's a lot of energy released, you know, from drummers. You know, I mean, for musicians, it's, it's not. But yeah, drums are more physical. You're actually hitting things. You're literally smashing things. You can hit them pretty hard. You can't. You can't do that on a guitar. You know what I mean? You can. You can break guitar, but drums you do it all night. But anyways, yeah. Thank you and everybody out there. To, uh, go uh, check out. Check out Dead Daisies Radiance September 30th. The full records out. Four singles are out already, and and uh, we'll, we December we're in the UK for a couple of weeks, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. I haven't been there in five years, so I'm psyched. It's gonna be great. Perfect, Brian. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Nice meeting you. <laughs>